she says, is what I would like for us to ponder. Let's continue. How she did it, she lay postured upon the ground. This is like priesthood ordination, like diaconate ordination, like when a religious sister makes her perpetual vows, lay flat on the floor. It's all yours now. From now on, I am dead. I am kissing the ground. I'm going back to the ground from where you fashioned me and breathed upon me the spirit of life. So flat on the floor. By the way, that's one of the most powerful positions of prayer. So here she is, mortal anguish, flat on the floor. I, I suggest extending your hands also as you're flat on the floor because it, it really will connect you with Jesus Christ at the cross with arms outstretched. She, she lay postured upon the floor <coughs> together with her handmaids. So she's not doing this alone. She, there's intercessors, spiritual warriors interceding. So you're reaching out to those who are closest to you to also pray with you in this mortal anguish, prostrated in the floor. And then it says, from morning until evening. So this was not just a little five minute prayer. <laughs> this was an entire day, from morning till evening, prostrated. That implies fasting, because if you're prostrated, you can't eat unless, anyway, we're not gonna go there. But, you know, prostrated from morning <laughs> to evening. And then she says, now, so we see her feelings, mortal anguish. We see how she's in position of prayer, prostrated, fasting in the ground, kissing the floor from morning to evening together with others who are interceding, who are joining her in this prayer. And now here comes the prayer. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Typical introduction uh, for a true Jew going back to his to the ancestors the the, father, the god of my fathers god of abraham god of isaac god of jacob blessed are you so here's a a, a, a form of worshiping praising god blessed be your name and now what she is asking for help me help me who am alone and have no help but you. Help me. This is begging. This is, this is something is really happening here. She feels alone. No one there to help me. So they have her handmaids and intercessors, but this feeling that often seizes the, the human heart, it's like I'm alone without help. I may be surrounded with many people, but I'm alone. Seize the mortal anguish. Help me. It says, who well, I'm alone and have no help but you. This implies that she has tried many ways to get help and all has been closed doors. No one has offered to help. No one has answered my plea. I'm alone. <laughs> And I got nowhere else to go but you. And it says, For I am taking my life in my hands. I'm just going to stop there because that is so loaded. I am taking my life. I am taking my life in my hands. Now, just meditating upon just that phrase, a couple of things came to mind. One, she says, I'm taking my life. It's almost like she, there's, there's, I almost sense she's taking my life back. So somehow she was trusting someone else. So my life is in the hands of this person to care for me. Uh, and somehow something may have happened, a sense of disappointment, frustration, uh, this often happens with, uh, let's say, uh, children with their parents. Uh, when something in the family happens and, and there, there is this great disappointment with the family, with parents who you entrusted your life to, 
to care for you, and then something horrible happened, perhaps your parents who are not perfect did something that really broke your heart. And all along you had this sense of, I could trust and entrust myself to my parents and after that event, it's like, I can no longer trust them. I need to now take my life back on my own hands. I can't trust them. It, that, that feeling of taking your life into your hands, meaning it was in someone else's hands, something horrible passed, happened, you're disappointed, discouraged, you almost feel abandoned by those who you entrusted yourself to. And then the words that it, she uses later on, she says, as a child, I used to hear the book of our forefathers, I was free, and then now help me, who am alone and have no one but you, O Lord. And then it says, um, and now come to help me an orphan. So that expression of I'm taking my life in my hand has a sense of taking my, my life back from someone I entrusted. You almost feel this sense of disappointment, something horrible happened. Those who I trusted, I can no more. I have to take it back. I can only trust myself to do this. When she says, I'm taking my life in my hands, another implication is this sense of, I, I can't trust anybody any, anymore. I, I have to do it myself. I thought someone else would, or that, or he and there. Nope, that's it. And here's that phrase, if you want something done, do it yourself. Careful with that phrase, that could get very messy. Because that's leading into isolation, uh, this radical, unhealthy way of living, an independent life, independent from everyone. No man is an island. Careful when, you, when you're in that mode, do it yourself, you want something done. Because imply it says you can't trust anyone, and perhaps that's true. Now you're there with Queen Esther. You're joining her in her prayer. This expression of I'm taking my life in my hand, it, it almost ha also has a sense of there, there's a high risk here. There, there's a lot of state that, that somehow she's, she has to take it to, upon herself. And if she's not able to do it, it's hopeless. If she's not able to figure it out, it's done. But you also, you almost sense this, I'm taking my life in my hands. Almost like a suicidal ideation. Can you sense it with those words? I am taking my life in my hands. Wow. This is how sorrowful her anguish is. That she's to the point of even considering taking her own life. This is Queen Esther's prayer. I, you know, you may be surprised, but this place of suicidal ideations and, and being in mortal anguish that you will prefer death over having to suffer this anguish, it's more common than what you think. And I know when you feel this, uh, people tend to isolate in shame, afraid, and that's what makes it even worse. But let me, let me just reassure you, if you're going through this experience, it is common. It's even natural. So don't feel like you're the only one going through these emotions. And if you are, I'm inviting you to go into Queen Esther's prayer. Be like her. Join her in her plea. Postrate yourself. Not just taking matters in your hands, not just taking it away from someone who you trusted and now you're so disappointed, you feel abandoned, you feel like an orphan, you're alone, isolated. Prostrate yourself and give yourself to God. Actually, in that moment of suicidal ideal ideations, there's something beautiful unfolding. And I know it's difficult, but it's just the mystery of the cross. It, nobody likes the cross when you look at it from the outside, but when you enter into the mystery of it, you begin to taste resurrection and the beauty that comes after it. You say, well, what could be beautiful about suicidal ideation? You know, I, 
What's beautiful about it is that it, if, if you go beyond the thoughts of it and go to your inmost heart, at the core of your heart, there is this moment where your heart is saying, take life into your hands and give it to God. Basically saying, entrust yourself completely to God. See, in that experience, in that sorrow, anguish, mortal anguish, sorrowful to the point of death, perhaps you're even considering, when, when you start considering suicidal thoughts, this is now the evil one hijacking something that is happening beautiful at the heart. And because perhaps we're not attending to it, the evil one presents you a lie. Oh, what you need is just to take your life. No, no. But if you go to the heart and you listen to what the heart is saying, the heart is saying, it's time to give yourself completely to God. It sounds very similar, but boy, different consequences. When you feel this desire deep within you of doing the ultimate, taking matters in your own hands, taking your life in your hands, is so that then you can entrust it completely to God. Rather than taking matters into my own hands and then killing myself. No. But rather let that bubble up and let it come to fruition to its fulfillment. Let, it, let the good work that has begun in your heart bring to this ultimate end which is saying, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. An act of total surrenderness to God. As I've helped people dealing with suicidal thoughts, that act of total giving yourself to God needs to be accompanied with a concrete sacramental act, if you may. I give myself completely to you, God. And as a way of doing this, Father, you show me whom I should confide and trust this experience, this feeling. Find who is that Esther around you. <clears throat> who is that Queen Esther that could help you? Because based on her experience, she will know what to help you with. Because Queen Esther knows that feeling. Ask the Father, Father, show me who's the Queen Esther that I need to reach out so as to bring this feeling, these emotions, these struggles to the light. Who is the handmaid that I need to have next to me, prostrated as I abandon myself completely to you? Precisely at this moment of great anguish, you cannot be alone. And you need to bring it to the light. And when you bring it to the light, let it, that be the concrete act of you saying, Father, I entrust myself completely to you. Tell me whom I should speak to about this. And let that be the act of me saying, I surrender completely to you. Once you begin to do that act and the Father shows you the person whom to talk to. And if you're going through it right now, talk to me. That's fine. That's, I'm, I'm not a queen, but at least I know Queen Esther <laughs> enough to be able to help. When you bring it to the light, it's when the, the evil work begins to dissipate. Because if you stay alone in darkness, that's his realm. He's going to take full advantage of it. But when you bring it to the light in an act of surrenderness to God and allow him to bring forth that person that you talk to and begin this journey of doing a total abandonment to the Father at light, in the light, in Christ Jesus, like Queen Esther, then things unfold for greater good. There's a symbol here that she says, you know, I put my put in my mouth persuasive words in the presence of the lion. If you stay in darkness, isolated with those suicidal thoughts, you are facing a lion. You won't be able to beat him. You just won't. So you need to turn to the light, abandon yourself to the Father, and as you entrust Him, let Him now bring that Queen Esther 
And when you see that Queen Esther, and you will know that the Lord is sending you this person, then you open up, speak up, share your emotions, and trust yourself to God through that person that the Father has sent to be an instrument to help you in that situation. So, I finish with, you know, if you are struggling as Queen Esther struggled, if you're struggling as Jesus Christ himself struggled, it's very human. And he was fully human, fully divine, but fully human. So he took up on himself everything that is human, even this very human feeling of moral anguish, sorrowful to the point of death. If you go into something like this, my suggestion is listen to your heart that wants to prostrate itself, surrender completely to God, give yourself, speak of it to Him, and then say, I feel like taking life from my own hands, and I do so only as to give it to you, Father. I bring it to the light. Now, Father, sent me that Queen Esther into my life that I may talk to that person, bring issues to the light, and allow this very sorrowful experience that leads to the cross to be what from cross leads to resurrection, leads to the greater life, and that the good work that the Lord has begun in your heart through this seizing of mortal anguish within you may bear the fruits of eternal life. It's labor pain. That's the best way to describe it. When you're seized with moral anguish, is your own soul experiencing the contractions, the pain, because life is about to give way. This is something is about to begin anew, but boy, those, those pains are tough. You who are mothers, you know how painful that could be. And that's the same experience that happens in the soul. But if you're in it, know that that is labor pain about to give birth to new life. And it's the new life that we're all called to, a life of total entrustment and abandonment to God, letting Him respond to our needs by sending the Queen Esthers, the people to help us, and together with those people as a church to make the ultimate sacrifice of saying, into your hands we commend your spirit, into your hands we are handmaids of the Lord, and in the end, it's really imitating the Blessed Mother. Queen Esther is just foreshadowing our Queen Mother. If you have no one, ask her help. Queen Mother Mary. Ask for Queen Esther. Ask for anyone. But don't stay in the darkness alone. It's too dangerous. The lion will eat you alive. So let's finish with Esther's words. O oh God of of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. Blessed are you. Help me, who am alone and have no help but you, for I am taking my life in my hand. As a child, I used to hear from the books of my forefathers that you, O oh Lord, always free those who are pleasing to you. Now help me. Who am alone and have no one but you. 